So now I've got my basic four walls for my structure. And the next task that I need to take on is to put floors inside of my structure. To do that, I'm going to go to a floor plan view. So over here in my project browser, I double click on level one, and that takes me to that plan view. And what I'm looking at now are the four exterior walls that I've created, the EIFS or EFS on metal stud. And um, now what I need to do is use my floor tool to go ahead and create that. So I'm going to click on floor up here. And that puts me into the create floor boundary ribbon. And I've got all of my um, drawing tools available to me over here. And so I could pick one of those, like for instance, I could use a straight line and I could just, you know, draw a floor in whatever shape um, and then hit the finish button here and that would go ahead and create that four inch concrete slab floor in that weird trapezoid shade, shape that I made. Well, that's not very handy and not very exact, so I'm going to undo that. So I go up to my uh, quick access toolbar and click the undo button and again and again and again and that gets rid of those pink lines. So what, what I want you to know is that the pink lines are defining the boundary of my floor. And so what I might use instead of pink lines would be the exterior walls. So I'm going to use this pick walls tool. It's this little guy right down here in the lower right hand corner of my drawing pane and it's the one that Revit actually defaults to so you actually don't have to do what I just did uh, but I wanted to show you the difference between just drawing lines and using the pick walls tool so I'm gonna pick, uh, use the pick walls tool so I click on that and then I click on each one of my four exterior walls and notice I get the pink lines and they're exactly as long as my exterior walls and so if I'm happy with my floor type and all that kind of good stuff I can click the finish button here and go ahead and get a floor. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I click once and there's my floor. It's still selected uh, because I haven't clicked any place else. So it's blue because it is selected. So if I click out here in the white space or if I click escape a couple of times, it'll deselect that. And um, I'm going to turn on shaded in my uh, display options here so that you can actually see the floor. So now my walls are coming in as the dark gray, my floor is light gray. Well, let's um, go ahead and look at that floor and see if we can't copy it up. So here's, here's an important little um, function that happens within Revit. I want to select this floor so that I can copy it and then paste it onto my other levels. But I can't select it. As many times as I click on it, I cannot select it. So I've created the floor, and so now I want to be able to select that floor and copy it up to the other levels. I'm going to go back to my three-dimensional view. So I go up to my quick access toolbar up here at the top of my screen, and I click on the little house, and that takes me back to my three-dimensional view. Um, there's a neat little trick available in Revit. If you want to see what's going on inside of your structure, you can turn on what's called a section box in your 3D view. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. So just click in the white space out here just to make sure that your properties dialog box here is to the 3D view. And then I'm going to slide this selector down just a little bit until I get down to, there we go, uh, view extents section box is not checked. I'm going to go ahead and put a check in that box just by clicking in the box. And now you can see that I've got this um, clear box around my structure. I'm going to click on the box to select it. So just hover over one of those lines. And notice I get these push-pull handles that now I can go in and uh, move my section box back a little bit. So I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And now you can see what's going on with your section through your building. And so now I'm able to select that floor. Let me, uh, I'm able to select the floor. There it is. I'm able to select that floor. And what I'm going to do is use the uh, copy function that's in Revit. And it's actually kind of a neat little copy function. I go up to my um, modify floors ribbon which automatically activates when I selected the floor and I hit copy to clipboard it's a little bit different than just a standard copy function but copy to clipboard 
And then when I did that, notice that my paste button uh, is now available. It was grayed out before, but now it's available. And click that drop down arrow underneath paste. And what's available there that's really kind of neat is this paste aligned to selected levels. It's the second option down. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it gets me this little dialog box where I can select the levels that I want to paste this thing to. Well, it already exists on level 1, so I want level 2. And then I'm going to hold down the shift button so that I can select level 3 at the same time. And I'm going to click OK. And now I've got my floors on levels 1, 2, and 3. Easy as that. So now I need to go ahead and put in a roof. So I click out in the white space just to deselect that last floor. And now I'm going to go back to my project browser and double click on the roof plan so that I can see the roof. And a funny thing happens here. Um, my view extents in this window are a little odd. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on an underlay of the first floor. So over in my properties dialog box over here, slide the slider down a little bit and you'll find this underlay option in that none box. Click the drop down arrow on the right hand side of that and select level one. And so now I've got a grade in version of my level one floor plan and it's showing me the walls. So all I've done is uh, kind of override the graphics in Revit so that I can see what's going on with my building below. So I'm going to go ahead and place a roof and a roof gets placed pretty much the same way as a floor does. So now that I can see my walls, I go and I click on the roof command and it's going to default to roof by footprint, which is the simplest way of doing it. So I click on that. It defaulted to the pick walls tool, which is great. And I'm going to click on the inside edges of those four walls. And once I've got that done, um, I can look at my roof types over here, but I think I'm going to stick with what I've got. Insulation on metal deck EPDM, which is a membrane roofing system. So I'm going to leave it like that. It's set to come in on the roof elevation, so life is good. I click the green finish check mark, and boom, there you go. I got a roof. I'm going to go back and check that out in three-dimensional view. So I go up to my quick access toolbar, click the little house for the 3D view, and now you can see that indeed I do have a roof on top of my structure. The relationship to the level's a little weird there, so we might go in and, and fix that at some point. Um, Tell you what, let's go ahead and fix it in this view. So I'm going to click uh, just out in the white space so that I can deselect that roof. And what I'm going to do is extend my four exterior walls up an additional three feet. And we did this kind of before when we made them tall. We took them up to the roof level. Well, now I'm going to hover over one of them and I'm going to click a tab on my, I haven't clicked my mouse yet, but I'm going to hover with my mouse over one of those walls over the edge so that I get that pre-select blue highlight and then I'm gonna click the tab button on my keyboard and so now I've got the pre-select highlight on all of the walls and now I do a left mouse click and so now I've got all four walls even though I can't see the one that's cut off by the section box I've got all four walls selected and so now I'm gonna put uh, up here where I've got top constraint up to level roof put a top offset in there of four feet and click apply and now you can see if I zoom in here some that the roof actually dies into the wall and the wall continues on beyond which is the way we probably want it to be